Hey everybody, I thought I would just record a quick video just showing off the latest features from Hackshi 2, uh, 2.13e. This just came out two hours ago. Uh, Cluster M did a fix in the morning. Um, what was going on is the compression was throwing things off. So I don't know if it was double compressing or triple compressing, who knows. But the compression algorithm was getting thrown off. I know there was a problem with the NES not turning off the red light and it wasn't syncing properly so he did fix that so I have 152 games right now I have 110 megabytes out of 300 megabytes of space with the new version of 2.13 showing the whole feature at the bottom which is fantastic thank you very much cluster for that so without any further ado let's get right into 2.13e <laughs> So today I'm going to do something different because I really can't show you compression. Um, you're just going to have to take my word for it that these games are compressed like I showed you in the previous part. So I'm going to show you something, games that weren't supposed to run on here. Like Batman Return of the Joker. This has been done before, people have showed you this before, so I'm not really going to go into it too far. But just this is showing just proof of concept that they're using the NES, NES Topia emulator on it for RetroArch, so we're not going to go into too many details on it, but it does work fine, it looks beautiful, plays wonderful. We're going to do something completely, completely different. I don't know if anyone has showed this, I'll show you this little gem called Crisis Force. I believe this is a Japanese only shooter that Konami released in the late, late life of the Nintendo. A lot of fun, amazing graphics. Great music, too. God. So Crisis Force works through the NES Topia emulator, which is awesome. <laughs> this is Donkey Kong Country for Nintendo. It actually works now. <laughs> Oh my god, this is crazy. This is such a hack. But, you know what? They could have done it. They could have put this on Nintendo, guys. You see the proof is right in the pudding. <laughs> god, I think they did a fantastic job with this, actually. Music is similar, not dead on, but better than what I could do. Whoop! <laughs> that is pretty cool. I haven't tested it yet, but it should work now. Oh my goodness. Holy Diver. This is another Japanese-only game that was never released here, and I suppose it's amazing, but it's very difficult. I've never even... I don't even think I've ever even played this. Not even for a minute. Oop. So that works great. Awesome. So now I have a couple of new gems I can play through. Old classic stuff. There we go. Killer Instinct, of course. I put that on here. Killer Instinct. And then I'm going to try this one, guys. Cross your fingers. I don't know if anybody's ever posted this yet, but this might be the first. This is LaGrange Point, a game that uses the VRC7 Konami sound chip. I don't know if it's going to play. I don't know if it's playing the music. It is playing the music. Holy shit. Wow. I can actually play LaGrange Point on this thing now. That's really cool. So you'll notice the sound on this is a little bit different, guys. If you've never if you've never if you're not familiar with this, LaGrange Point uses basically like an FM sound chip. It's the best way to put it. And that chip looks like a big penis. So what the sound chip does is just reproduce the sound similar to what a Genesis does. And you could tell. It just sounds amazing. 
and I can't skip this. Cannot skip at all, but just have a little listen. And this is a uh, role-playing game. I believe it's turn-based. Wow, they really went all out with this game. I believe these cartridges were over $100 when they first came out, so it was a very expensive game due to the sound chip. Maybe that's me. I don't know. Maybe that's me. And this is the game. Mysterious robots appear. They open fire. The shuttle explodes. And you wake up in bed. Or next to a bed. That's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I am saving that. I am going right back into that. This is Tetris Zero. This is a two-player hack of Tetris. Now, unfortunately, I don't have two players hooked up. Two controllers hooked up, but I'm going to still test it out. And this didn't work on the original uh, emulator that was on here, too. So this has been working since Nestopia was put on here. But I just want to show you guys that the system is just growing and growing. And with compression, you could fit more. Um, I should have mentioned it before, too. But the... Uh, Look at that. That's amazing. Now you can actually have two-player Tetris. What a great hack. But the uh, my total game space was about 200 out of 300 megabytes, and now it's about 100-something. So definitely improvement on the NES Classic Mini. Cluster M has done another revolutionary job. So just if you are doing the whole compression thing, you don't have to compress them first. Allegedly, the, the hack sheet, too, will actually do that for you. So, just a word to the wise on that one. I actually compressed them beforehand, too. Um, takes a while to put on, but it was well worth it. I had to re-add them, also. And I can't tell you how happy I am, so. Uh, when I have another video, guys, I will post it. Please feel free to like or subscribe. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a great day.